Welcome to my basement, everybody. We've got a great episode for you today. This is to celebrate the game Signy All Guns Blazing, which is coming from Konami, available for Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5, and PC, and it's coming very soon. And I've been playing the game, spoiler alert, and I've been having a great time with it. And I was kind of scheduling myself to create a preview piece around how I feel about the game. And then I thought the bigger story here is that this game exists. And I was very curious to find out how it all came together. So I've got Meher Kalendarian from Keelworks in Edinburgh, and I've got Richard Jones from Konami uh, in London. And uh, both of these guys have joined me to talk a little bit about their story with making this game, because as I'm playing this thing, and Meher, you can back me up here, it just feels so innately personal and so much a love letter to a bygone era for shooters that Konami is distinctly a part of. And Meher, how did this game start its journey? How did it come together? Oh, well, I'll, I'll try to keep it short. So uh, first of all, needless to say, this was a work of passion for us. Um, yeah. But to be, to be honest, we didn't start with this game when we first wanted to dive into the gaming scene as you know we mm. come from an animation and 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 visual effects background and we because of our story kind of telling background we wanted to make a story driven game with action and all that and we started working on a project separately uh but i don't know if you've seen the making of there's episode one that released yesterday through playstation that tells a little I, bit more i, I so, have to see know, that yeah you can see that later on i, I won't uh, i won't go into that but uh one of the difficulties as a newcomer in the gaming scene we were facing was about the fact that we didn't have track record of published titles and so right what we decided to do fast forward to park the other title that we were also passionate about and to do something small on a smaller mm. scale so we mm. decided to do another because we will never do anything that is not passion driven. So we will always work on games that we are passionate about. That is uh, from now until forever. Um, and my brother Narek wouldn't accept otherwise anyways. Uh, so what <laughs> we did was we created this small, um, we wanted to make a small shmup game on mobile just to say we did a small game, tick that box, publish title, there you go. But right. while we were doing that, while we were, you know, of course we were getting the feedback that listen, guys, this is a bit more than a small mobile game. You can do this on PC. I'm like, yeah, yeah, we, we know that, but we just want to tick that box. But at the same time, we realized that we really were enjoying this. The the, mm. the, the nostalgia that came to us because, okay, we grew up playing shmups, right? So yeah, yeah, <laughs> needless yeah. to say. Guilty. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we, we grew up playing, playing on that. I mean, you know, let's go back to the 80s and, and early 90s. I mean, everybody was going to arcade going to the cinema and that experience that you had playing those games. I mean, shooters were, were the era back then. They were, yeah. you know, they were not really part of the era. So it was, it was the era. So for us, there was that nostalgia that was coming in as we were developing this little game. And we mm -hmm. want, we kind of, it, it grew in, it grew in us that we, we needed probably to work on this a bit more. And we decided very quickly that we needed to, to part the other bigger game and to focus on this because we were kind of uh, really into it. And, and, you know, there were two reasons, I will say. One is the nostalgia that I mentioned, and the other one was a business decision. So that's where I come in. So I'm the business guy, <laughs> and, you know, and, and, and I, I was trying to say like, okay, if we do a shmup, if we do a shooter game, people think that shmups are dead. It's a dead genre. Now, I kind of disagree with that. I don't yes. think it's dead. I think it's probably in hibernate. It was in hibernation mode, but you know, it's overtaken by first-person shooters and and all the other action cool games uh, of of the you know after the 2000s perhaps. But uh, we thought that if we wanted to make a, sh a shmup nowadays, it cannot be a copy paste of the old. Right. So not just be a, here's a coat of paint and it's done you know uh, and and it just wouldn't sell with the, wouldn't go down well with the publishers uh, and and that's not going to work so we wanted to create something that was immersive um, captivating gameplay but also because of our background we wanted to really focus on the visuals and do something that was interesting and you know maybe i might have answered this a bit longer but i wanted to give you a context of uh, of, sure. history, of history so that was, you know, the reason was to recreate the experiences we had back in the days playing shoot, uh, shooter games 
in an arcade, not only for it, which was not only for high score ch- chases, by the way, it was for everybody. Everybody yeah. really enjoyed that, right? So we wanted to replicate the experience, not those games, the experience playing those, but using the current technology at hand, using the current generation technology, uh, whether it's the softwares we're using or whether it's the uh, you know uh, home consoles that people have or the computers and yeah. and the big and the big screens. And that's what we wanted to do with Signy. And Konami really understood that. Well, this is a perfect pivot point over to you, Richard. I mean, uh, the the shooter history of Konami is incredible. There's just so many titles. Um, You know, Radius is one of the first ones that comes to mind. But there's a whole bunch of shooters in the Konami. One of my favorites is Time Pilot. And that's like an incredible arcade experience that's just sitting there. Killworks should make a new Time Pilot. I'm just putting that out there. (laughs) <laughs> but but what 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 was the attraction? Right yeah, <laughs> uh, you you've sold one already if you make that. Uh, <laughs> but what was the what was the attraction with Signy and more specifically Killworks because Killworks and I don't forgive me Mahara I don't know your background. We'll get into that a little bit in some of the properties that you've worked on. But what was it about Killworks and this game that? said to you and to your colleagues at Konami, let's do this. Let's partner with them. Let's help them bring this to market because that is not an insubstantial commitment. Konami is a huge game company with a massive history. That's a big deal that you guys signed up with these guys. Yeah. So again, perhaps it makes sense to give you a little bit of a little bit of background context as to where, you know, where myself and where the European production department come into this. Mm-hmm. Um, we were Konami was in the process of putting together a a production department in Europe and also one in the US, um, and so I was part of that department. Um, and I was we were looking for we were looking for our first game to sign. We looked at lots of games. You know, obviously we you know we we had a few uh, a few that we liked. You know, with, we 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 uh, toyed with the ideas, um, and then we came across Signy, um, and. I think everything that both you and Meher have touched on are, is completely true. You know, yeah. Konami has an amazing heritage of shoot 'em ups. So as soon as we saw a shoot 'em up, it was like, oh, that's interesting. You know, this is kind of Konami's bread and butter, or certainly was back in the 80s. But this wasn't any normal looking modern, you know, sort of shooter. It, it was, it, it stood apart basically because of how beautiful it looked. We saw an early demo that um, uh, that Narag and Helen had put together themselves. Um, and just based on that, it was clear that there was something really interesting there. You know, but when we spoke to the guys at Killworks, to Meher and, and Narag, um, it was very obvious that they had this, they had this very interesting idea of wanting to bring the shoot them up up to date. And what we were looking at on screen just made absolute sense. All of a sudden, it kind of fell into place. The more we spoke with the guys, the more we realized that, you know, we were both sort of setting out on our journey, if you like. This was our first game that we were signing as um, Konami, you know, Europe from our production team. Um, it was Killworks' first game. It was a shoot 'em up. Konami has a heritage of shoot 'em ups. It just kind of felt like there was a lot of, a lot of sort of connective tissue there. The more we spoke to the team, the more we realized, you know, what an interesting studio they are. You know, the fact that they came from a, a non-traditional video game development background meant mm. that the way they looked at the games, the gameplay, the problem solving was very different. And we just thought it was really exciting. And what, you know, and what we were seeing on screen was just very exciting. So that was really why, why we signed it. We loved the idea of updating the genre. Konami hasn't really been active in, in this genre for probably, I guess, Radius 5 is the last one, when PlayStation yeah. 2. So, you know, this seemed like a really good way to start, you know, start our journey of, uh, of publishing new titles. Meher, I'm, I'm curious about the research that y- your team kind of did on shooters. Did you start with, you know, classics like Gradius and stuff? Be- I'll tell you why, because I'm playing the game. And the first thing that pops into my mind is Einhander, which was a PlayStation 1 polygonal shooter from Square Enix. And it was so cool and so innovative. 
And then, you know, there was a Sega CD game called Sylphid, and there's a few, you know, Star Fox for sure. There's a few others that sort of get into polygons. Uh, I think of even Descent Free Space in a way with the explosions and stuff that were almost kind of photoreal. And I see this melange in what I'm playing in Signy. It's like this distillation of all of these promises that didn't quite continue. And to me, it's baffling because... We had decades of shooters of, you know, proving like they kept making them. So they kept selling them like they just were working and then stopped cold, you know, and I just don't understand why. And the answer is Signy. When you're playing, it's like, well, yeah, why didn't they keep going on this this polygonal path? You know, I'm glad that you picked up on the fact that, you know, first of all, I get this question. What inspired you to make this game? I'm like, well, it's very difficult for me to pinpoint on one title that inspired us to make Sigma mm. because of the, what I, I explained earlier. So yeah. of course we played, you know, Gradius, Castlevania. We played, you know, we where we were doing research as well. In recent times, we could remember the or the the Ray Force that we that, it, that is kind of more how they use depth in their levels and how they sure. use the home styles is perhaps if you played it, it, it's similar to that kind of inspired us as well to use those elements in in, in Signy, for example. Um, yep. uh, you know, getting they, a little they, Xevious in there too. Yeah, I mean the original art type in the the was it the eighty nine? I think uh, yep. you know we played that. So we played a, a, a lot of these shmups. We also talked to uh, hardcore kind of enthusiast shmup in the shmup community. Some very well known names in the shmup community, and they came on board. They were very excited to figure out Whoa. what we're trying to do. And I was happy because some of them, of course, majority will struggle to have an open mind because. You know they they have yeah. their own uh, kind of niche uh, areas and they they are their computers even are designed to only <laughs> play those games so it, all it the monitors are that way yeah yeah of course and a lot of people <laughs> yeah. ask us and we, we we happily whenever we have time we discuss this so but also just to go back to your question uh so that is one element so the shmop element we, we took bits and pieces from our experiences playing those we played them again we tried to figure out because again as i said we didn't want to uh, replicate the same um, yeah. We also have, for example, a crowd system in in Signy. We realize that, and that's you know that's not common in in, in shmups. It's more maybe a strategy game or something, you know. So so we have also yes. we played other games over the the years. We played we we enjoy playing other games. Myself personally, I play a lot of strategy games. Nadek plays all sorts of different kind of games, uh, and he's the game director, so he's more uh, kind of the decision maker. For that. You know what? It, when you when when I was playing Signy, I was thinking of the Homeworld guys. You know, Blackbird. Oh. It's one of his yeah. it's, it's one of the favorites. It's, yeah, yeah, and the ship designs are there is some kind of parody there, you know. And I'm thinking, why they, didn't they just come out with a shooter with the Homeworld brand? They built all these models and all that stuff. I I, I said it before. Like one thing that not like always like one thing that one day he was explaining to somebody about it. So he's like, look, imagine. Imagine like a Star Wars epic battle and, you know, starship troopers on the ground. So that's sort of frenzy, hectic kind of chaos on screen with with yeah. explosions and, and visual effects that are there's rich with sound effects that is completely different than the genre that, you know, not very common in this genre specifically. And we, we decided to do this, uh, you know, that was part of the game design from the very beginning. Now, of course, people think that making a shmup, maybe we thought that too at the big, very beginning that, you know, that would be a practical project, but also a passion project to start with Signy. But the more we did the research, the more we went into it, as I explained, the more we faced challenges. And we can talk about challenges later on or whenever you get to that, uh, but that's the, another topic. But yeah, it it is, a, um, to sum it up, it's it's a combination of a lot of shmups we played, but not doesn't stop there. It has a lot right. of story action adventure games that we were uh, inspired by um and 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 other movies that we were inspired. so it's, so a lot of things went into this uh, this game while trying to keep true to the game design so that it wouldn't really be uh, a chaotic uh, game design that people want to understand it will not be as simple as the traditional ones of course because you need to mm -hmm. give it time you know and when a lot of my friends come and they jump in and play the normal mode i'm like listen this is not this the simple you know the traditional kind where you just confidently jump in you have to go and do the tutorial to learn about the different yeah <laughs> you, oh yeah don't, don't play the hero <laughs> game it's okay put the ego aside for a few minutes play on easy first you know because you've got more yeah. lives in easy and it, and yeah so that helps with the experience as well so that's that's the inspiration there's no one answer for it there's no one particular title that i can pinpoint well, and, and Meher, to your credit, I mean, that that's what I get when I play the game. I feel the movie elements in there. I feel that orchestral 
you know, beauty surrounding me. I see the cacophony. I see the, the, the carnage all over the screen. There's all of these little beautiful elements and depth and detail. You know, is this a part of a larger universe? It feels like you guys have crafted this to think, where else can we lift on this? Uh, I, you know, I kept thinking it would be amazing to pivot the camera and go into first person mode or little Star Fox action. But are you guys thinking beyond what what I is mean, a part of this game? There is there is a beyond. There is potential for a beyond. Depends on how this game does. If you know, and yeah. I think so far feedback has been great we were also surprised because it's the unknown you don't never nobody knows yes. you know and yes. So, yes so when we see all this positive feedback from the majority of course you will always have a percentage which is fine you know not everybody yep. will, will enjoy it but but uh the majority are 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 finding something good in this game and and i hope people enjoy it people like it and the doors are open for the future whether it's whatever it is you know but this there's a storyline in it which is very subtle. I don't know if you managed to to see the cutscenes that we put in there. So I the did, story yeah. was important, but we wanted to keep a good balance for the story, uh, Vic. We didn't want it to interrupt the gameplay. So the story is through the, the CG cinematics intro and then outro that we have, but also every single time you finish a level, you will have a short cutscene, which is uh, through the eyes of the protagonist, Ava, the pilot. Mm -hmm tells a story or asks the questions about what's going on here, and that slowly evolves. And while you're playing the, each level, that also helps you understand what, who are those creatures that are attacking us, what's happening, and then that slowly unfolds that, you know, that you are, the, the, the Cygni is this planet colonized by humans for many years, and then they were leeching on this technology that existed on this planet and to use to, to advance their own tech. So, so what happens is suddenly they are forced facing this attack and these biomechanical creatures attack them that look similar to the guys on the ground that they've been leeching on their technology. So maybe they are the original inhabitants of Signy. I don't know. We'll figure it out. But, you know, <laughs> but the doors are open for whatever comes. There's a lot of potential for the Signy, Signy world. Yeah, you can absolutely feel that. Had you, this is your first game as uh, under the Keelworks banner, but had you worked in games on mm. cinematics or anything before? We have done cinematics before, but we have never worked on, this is our first ever game. Uh, Nareg and Helen come from a movie background, so I run the business side of things. Uh, I'm a project managing Signy as well. That's how I know a bit more details about the technical stuff, if we can get into yeah. that later. Well, and for people yeah. that don't know, you told us this in the preview conversation, you, your company isn't huge, right? It's it, it, You no, probably have no. a pretty large visual effects team, but the, the game side is like 15 no, people or something? We don't, have a, we don't have a big visual effects team. Keelworks oh. is a startup. And, okay. uh, you know, and, and uh, Nareg and Helen and I were the three people in Keelworks, and my uncle Vache does the music. So uh, we That's started awesome. off by doing this. So the cinematic intro that you saw, which we also announced the release date with, People come to me and say, oh, how big is your team? How big is your budget? I'm like, that cinematic was done by two people only, but not again, <laughs> entirely in wow. their spare time as well. So, so you know, uh, that's that's the way we were working. And we are we were a group of three when we signed the deal with Konami. And then my uncle, who's doing the music composition, and then we grew the team slowly and gradually we became six. And then the peak of production, we were 14 and now back down to eight. That's the amazing core at the moment. So we're not a massive team. Um, Is that how you would scale on um, on uh, computer graphics projects, on visual effects projects, and stuff that you would do? You, would you when just we were, when we were working on the on the graphics projects? Uh, it was just the three of us. We didn't have a big a big team. So we have such a talent that this was just enough to <laughs> to produce uh, to do that. But Keelworks is a freshly registered company. So mm. uh, and we did lots of work uh, just to cover the bills while we were uh, learning the gaming industry. So, uh, so that's what we were doing. So we were doing a lot of advertising work. We were doing, you know, uh, commercials. And it was not very interesting stuff we were doing <laughs> to pay the bills. Uh, <laughs> but we wanted to learn the game development. Uh, and that's why we took our time for a few years to, to learn that. And I was taking my time trying to, while I had a full-time job, trying to figure out how this industry functions, the management, the funding, the publishers. You know, I, I learned a lot during this, this period as well. Sure. But I, also, I observed a lot from a publisher's perspective that not all publishers will see the potential and jump on it. <laughs> so that's a different thing. Oh, yeah. Know? And Richard, 
th- this is this is what's so amazing about this because you know we're in such a volatile time in video games right now. So this is a beautiful, beautiful freaking story that this is game is coming. It looks so cool. It's a rejuvenation of an established genre that's kind of being ignored. Uh, and I, 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 you know, it's hard. I, I saw this over a year ago at, a, at the Konami event where they had the, the Metal Gear Solid collection and it was stunning and it already it was stunning. And it's just been amazing to see this all come together. I, I have to applaud you guys on having the vision to see this story to fruition. Has it been a case of having to constantly, you, you know, calm everybody's nerves and say, no, this is coming, this is coming? Or has it been like, nope, these guys have got it. You know, this this is going to be a, a solid game and people want this. How, how has it been on the Konami side? Um, I mean, when we when we signed the game, we we knew what we had. We knew there was massive potential with Killworks and with the game itself. We went in with our eyes open. You know, we knew that Killworks were a startup. We knew this was their first game. We had a huge amount of faith in their abilities and what they bring, their skill sets that all the you know that the key members bring. Um, so we you know we knew there was the talent there, but yeah, of course you know there's there's always there's, there's always that apprehension, isn't there? Um, yeah, you know, and I'm sure you know, it doesn't matter how much have. experience you have, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, you can be the most experienced person in in the industry, and making video games is really tough. Yeah. Um, you know, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure Meher can uh, can speak for some of the sort of trials and tribulations that they've got, you know, that they've gone through, that we've all gone through. But I think the important thing is, is how, you know, how they've gotten over those, how they've, mm. they've conquered these, you know, these obstacles that game development throws at you. Um, you know, and yeah, sure, we've had to steady people's nerves, um, you know, of course, but I think right from the get-go, you know, just looking at that first demo and then obviously the version that you saw um, last year, yeah. you know, whenever we've been able to show it to people, you know, what you see on the screen, it, it answers a lot of questions. So, you know, I think the, you know, the uh, the trials and tribulations that they've, you know, that the development uh, went through, it, it's it's all been worth it, you know, and it's uh, it's all on the screen. Um, have you so gone through this before, Richard? Person. Have you done this no. before with a startup ever before? No. No. So I mean, we um, we've we've signed a few um, studios who we're working with, um, but Killworks um, are the first startup. There is another studio we're working with now who are in a similar situation. Um, okay. But um, no. So it was a learning curve for everyone. And that was the nice thing, you know, we've become yeah. so close with the, the guys at Killworks, um, you know, and when things have arisen, first first thing we've done is get on the phone or, you know, um, get on a video call and 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 talk it through. And, and it's, yeah, it's been a really nice collaboration. I think the important thing to remember as well is that we always saw this as a Killworks project. Yeah. What we didn't want to do as Konami was come in and sort of steamroller this and say, you know, this is, you know, this has got to be this way, that this has got to be that way. I think one of the things I was really keen on was my belief in my belief in the skill of um, uh, of the studio, you know, and not wanting to not want to guide them and help them. But I wanted this to remain, you know, the vision that we first saw from them. Um, Wonderful. So, yeah, Wonderful. I hope. I hope that we've, you know, managed to uh, manage to achieve that. Well, you can feel uh, over the last several years, there's this re- rejuvenated sense of um, experimentation and uh, Konami definitely looking at its its prized IP and finding new ways to bring, you know, that Turtles collection was just unbelievable, mm-hmm. you know, and, and Contra uh, Operation Galuga was a lot of fun, you know, it might not hit the super highs that the Contra series has done in the past, but there's this, and I mean, a Metal Gear collection, like there's this energy at Konami that is just, it, it must be really exciting. I know you've been with the company for a long time. So yeah, yeah. is there a new, a new sense of like, let's, try some things let's play let's get out the community and let's let's see what we can come up with let's let's bring some new things out there yeah absolutely there's i think you know there's this time at the moment is incredibly exciting 
You know, mm. there is so much going on. There is so much energy within the within the company. Um, and I think from my side as well, we always wanted to we always wanted to do something experimental. We didn't want to do anything predictable. Mm. You know, um, and so again, I'd like to hope that everything that we do has that sort of has that energy and that um, courage to it. Um, yeah. You know, and you look at something like Signy, and yes, it's a top-down vertical shooter, um, but it's not a top, not just a top-down vertical shooter. I mean, even as much as the control system that we you know that it's using, and the fact that you can direct the bullets with the right stick, the fact you're using the trigger buttons to shoot, you know, these were all key sort of key. Uh, Features, you know, we wanted this game to be ex accessible to everyone. You know, I think there's always been a there's always been a, a, a concept, or certainly in the last twenty years, there's been a perception that shoot 'em ups are only for this hardcore group. You know, these right, sharp right. ninjas. Yeah. You know? And I think what we liked about um, Signy and where we, you know, where me personally sort of connected with the guys at Killworks was at one point. Shoot 'em ups were for everyone, right? But at some point, that that's that stopped. You know, it, yes. it's almost yeah. like it's almost like the egalitarian shoot 'em up stopped, and everything just went into incredibly intense bullet hell. Um, the industry and, is amazing at creating these little clubhouses, isn't it? You know, yeah, like yeah. there's beauty and there's art in that. Like when you look at the, you know, the Souls like games, they're incredible. But there is also this move in the video game industry to close things off. And it's like, no, you yeah. have to be good enough to come in. And games never started that way. They were always like, no, let's, no. let's just try this. Let's go, you know? Yeah. And that was it. So, you know, and going back to the, the control system, the fact that this is using con uses the pad that a modern player, you know, we can't assume that we can't assume that anyone who has a PlayStation 5 has ever played a shoot 'em up before. You know, right. You know, yeah. the shoot 'em ups is a it is a niche. Yeah. But they've all played first person shooters and third person action games. So the fact that the control system maps to the muscle memory of modern game players, I think that's going to probably scare the, you know, scare the life out of some old shmup fans. Um, yeah. but it's the fact that it's accessible, you know, a young a new novice shoot 'em up player can pick the controller up and it feels like they're playing you know, it feels it makes sense the controls make sense so yeah. that was one of those things you know this what this wasn't about being an elitist um game this is about everyone getting involved and 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 being able to get through with a little bit of application get through and see the the credits roll at the end totally. you know? and again so you look at some of the mechanics you know rather than one hit kills you've got an energy Bar, you know, and you're managing your energy systems. So you can take a hit from a bullet. So it's not as punishing, you know, and it's it's a it's a learning process. So hopefully novice players will feel less intimidated by that. Um, but then also expert players, you can use that to your advantage. If you know yeah. you can take more than one hit, yeah. you can dive through a hail of bullets to reposition yourself to get get an advantageous shot on an enemy or whatever. So you know, there is it's not just it's not just um, training wheels for novices. You know that whole system is also really interesting strategy for experts. And it's meant uh, to be replayed as well, right? It's meant to, you're meant to go through all the difficulty levels. You're meant to level up yeah. and and just keep trying different strategies and just keep going yeah. through it again and again. Yeah, exactly. So there's a number of there's a number of things in there. Um, yeah, the easy. We put the easy mode in. We released a we released a Steam Next Fest demo, and one of the yeah. comments that we got back from people was, you know, "This game's really I, I, tough. There's no checkpoints." Well, I, I, I've been playing easy. Full disclosure. That's you fine. <laughs> yeah. we, we all we all do as well. We pretend mm -hmm. we don't, but mm -hmm. secretly we all do. Easy um, still hard. <laughs> easy is still, still hard. plenty hard. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, we toned down the easy level. We added the extra lives to easy level. So we really did want to make this something that a novice player can jump into, have fun, and like I say, with a little bit of practice and a little bit of you know sort of um, application, get mm -hmm. through to the end. But then on the, the other end of that, once you finish the story, you unlock the arcade mode, 
which is you know where you can then post your scores on the on the global leaderboard um and that's the very opposite end of that where you get one life um and you have to get through every single level without a break so it's a marathon you know it's uh, that's the challenge there is marathoning it um so you know we like to think that there's a, you know there's something for there's something for everyone in this game i mean i know everyone wants everyone wants their games to appeal to everyone and that's unrealistic yeah. but we not everybody we, we no try. man no there's a lot of developers you know that that are like nope this is for this type of crowd you know and they do yeah. well you can't fault that sure. but sure. but yeah but i we I, wanted... I welcome people saying we want everybody to play this game i like yeah. that yeah yeah, or at least have a go at it. If that then means that some of these novice players then go out and rediscover, you know, proper hardcore, you know, bullet hell games from the '90s or the classics from the '80s, I mean, that's just great, isn't it? You know, those are the games yeah. that that I grew up on and that I love. So, you know, the more people that enjoy those, the better. That's awesome, Meher. One of the things that's special about the game, but I have to admit, it it's uh, confounded me a little bit, is the upgrade system. When I go to the upgrade screen, I don't quite know exactly what I'm I'm doing across all of the the upgrades there, and I, I've played all the levels, but I haven't quite beaten the whole experience yet, so I haven't been able to like go up at, at levels. Is does it all stay with you as you continue? Like if I start again on on after I beat the easy mode and and try the normal mode, does all of the progression continue, or how are you doing that? Yeah, the up, the upgrades will be there because it's, it's it's linked to the number of pickups you're getting. So the pickups will have two functions where they fill your shield, uh, which then you can use to shift between the shield and the weapon. But if yeah. the shield is full, it goes to those kind of at the le left hand side corner that your score, which you can then use. We accumulate that and you can use for your upgrades. So that stays; you, it doesn't disappear. Um, and and it uh, as you progress, the more you progress, the more you will have these um, these numbers you can use to uh, to unlock the upgrades. Now I understand the upgrade menu is is big and there's lots going on in it. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. uh, you know, uh, we could have re rethought the design, maybe separated the designer mode from the upgrade. Maybe next time, but it was a time constraint for us. I have to uh, admit, but. Um, but once you once you get used to it, you, it'll be easy because I, even myself, I was took me a while because I don't play as much as the other team members play, right? So when yeah. I, I could yeah. have a different kind of approach to it. So there's a designer mode in there as well, which is different than your upgrades, which is on the side. So there are yes. very clearly you will once you once you understand it, you will you will not forget later on. So it's the unlock. It says unlock. You just unlock these upgrades. You've got the different homing up, upgrades. You've got the weapon upgrades. Uh, that, and even you've got the uh, missile upgrades as well. So, and then you've got the few different guns. You can upgrade your ship by having two different uh, two drones, uh, additional drones on the side, which give you more guns. Uh, and you can ha use an upgrade to to unlock the a laser gun, uh, laser beam, uh, yeah. which is a cooldown period. I don't know if you managed to experience uh, experiment with that one. It has a cooldown no. period. It depends on your on how much uh, weapon slots you've got in your shield. Uh, in your um, yeah, in your HUD. So if the more it's filled, the the less the cooldown is for that laser beam, which is uh, quicker. Uh, and the 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 lower you have weapon slots in there, then the 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 the, the longer the cooldown period. So it's a slower. But it's useful for some of the enemies. You will once you get used to it, it'll be kind yeah. of a natural thing to switch between that uh, on on the go and use it. We also have the an upgrade which is. Um, I never unlocked that because I. <laughs> it's like the it's the, the, the I thought like the bomb thing that wipes out the whole thing. So the smart bomb, right on. on. Yeah. So I, yeah. I appreciate that it might be when you look at it the first time, it might be a bit too much. However, it, uh, it you know, took maybe, me a little while. I gotta I gotta yeah. be honest to to understand the shield and the uh, firing energy because you can switch on the two shoulder buttons and put a little bit more energy into your yes. firing capabilities or a little bit more energy into your into your shield and i was looking at the half circle going okay i don't quite 
I, you know what right, I did so is I jumped in without cool. playing the tutorial. <laughs> so I went right, after so I, I beat a bunch say, of levels. I went back to the tutorial. I'm like, oh, okay, I'm getting all this. Oh There's so much complexity in this game, not to mention the intensity, you know, and I'm smiling about you talking about all these these weapon upgrades because it is madness on that screen. There's so much stuff happening. And I, I really can't wait to unlock all this stuff and just see bullets going in every freaking direction from you. Because all you're doing is dealing with all these ships trying to kill you and all the the things that are on screen at the same time. I want to be that badass shooting back. That'll be amazing. I mean, the, the, the HUD, on when you're playing, there's that round uh, around your ship. Uh, one of the feedback we got during the Next Fest was that people wanted to see the HUD at the bottom of the screen, in the middle. Mm -hmm. So we added that. So you can go to the men menu and the settings. You can actually add uh, add that. So you have either or or both of them. If you have oh, difficulty that's cool. seeing, uh, seeing your HUD in front of the ship, you can just switch that off, ignore that. You just play with your ship, and then you just uh, focus on the on the HUD at the middle. Or you can have both. Some people want both on, uh, depending on where they are, and some people just switch it off. So again, it's it, there's a lot of things you can do in the options menu, switch things off and on, add things. So there's lots going on. That's why I, I kind of encourage people to play the tutorial. It's okay. It's not one of those things that, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a Superman. I can get the controller and just jump in it. It's, you know, it does require some muscle memory. Once yeah. you get used to it, it will be more enjoyable because it becomes, a, for example, now if I pick up a controller, it becomes muscle memory. Every Before I, I, I have to get a pickup, I automatically, uh, um, you know, put slots in my weapon. Oh, just it's like uh, without even thinking <laughs> uh, it's just uh, it's interesting how the muscle memory picks up of course of course one of the things that i noticed in the in the upgrade tree is that there's a lot of um similar icons and i'm wondering if there's a uh, you know i don't know if you guys will be still tweaking and patching it's not quite is it gone gold is everything done Yes, it's Everything done. three weeks. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's done. Yeah, okay. Uh, but I, I just I noticed all the, icon, the the icons looked similar, and I don't know if there was something that you guys could do to kind of differentiate some of the iconography on on the uh, right. on the upgrade. The icons street. you're talking about, uh, they may be for the designer mode. That's why I said perhaps it would have been a better idea to separate the designer mode from the upgrade menu. We yeah. have put them together due to the various reasons. I'm not going to go through, uh, go in it, but, <laughs> but it doesn't justify the design choice. We also the time. The time Time constraint we have we had and etc so having said that the, the middle of part and the side left side there is a part of the designer mode uh, yeah. and those are icons of the guns and that shows you when you unlock the designer mode you can design your own patterns and also swap around with the patterns on the go so those icons that perhaps i i think you're talking about those icons they are the same because they represent the gun angles Mm. So maybe that's what you're referring to, but I believe the icons for the upgrades have different. They're different. They're not the same. So okay. I think that's what you're referring to, and uh, and now you know why. <laughs> well, I you know the UI in video games is always a tough thing, and oh, yes. it's not they're they're not standardized across every game, and the it, it, it is part of the game is to learn what you guys are talking to me about. <laughs> that's just, that's always part of every game. So I know that that it this is just time you just spend time with it the core of what you guys have built is so inviting and so just it's like thumb candy and it's eye candy and it, you know it's beautiful it's just a beautiful beautiful piece of work you did mention though you had challenges in this progress and yes. you know and putting this together in this process talk to us about some of the things that that you faced and have overcome and are still learning about and still kind of working on of course Vic, before I mention that, just to uh, finish off your point earlier, because, you know, we had uh, people think that uh, this, because the first announcement of Signy was four years ago, uh, yeah. way before Konami was, you know, they think that this has been in production for four years. It's yeah. absolutely not true. <laughs> this has, you know, full-time production of Signy was two years. Yeah. Uh, and, and that includes... Uh, signing the deal with Konami, setting up the studio, uh, getting people like Narek and Helen were not in the country. They were needed visas. So I had to figure that out. I had to find a studio, furnish it, get all the hardware, software, do the recruitment, uh, all that at the same time while the clock was ticking for production to start. So it, we had two years, including all that. Uh, ever. But before that, the reason why four years ago is because that was my only chance to get the attention of publishers by risking everything and putting the game out there. And when we did put it out there, publishers started knocking on my door rather than the other way around for me to prove them that we can do it. 
And there was lots of media. I mean, to be honest, the media pushed us forward more than the publishers saw the potential. Right. This was before we talked to Konami. And then that led us to find Richard. And, you know, I was talking to Richard and then Richard straight away got it. But it took us time to sign the deal, to negotiate the contract. And I had two other deals on the table at the same time. So it took a, almost a year to finish that or nine months or I don't know. So fast forward, Signy only started full development when we signed with, with Konami. And then even then, when we finished the, 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 pro- the, the, the project, we had to wait for testers to go in. When you're mm-hmm. dealing with you know, all this, and then you have to uh, go for certification. And then if you're doing physical copies, you have to wait for the physical to be uh, prepared and distributed. All this takes time. And people actually don't, don't probably understand that you know there are a lot of things beyond these guys are full-time uh, 100 people sitting and working on it you know they see the yeah. konami logo and they see the the, the the juicy graphics and they think this is a triple a title with a massive budget it is not the case so i just wanted to put that out there because it's been well, something that comes up all the time yeah and you know people uh, definitely uh, viewers and listeners of my work and what i've been doing forever when when we put out there that you guys are a team of 11 people or 14 people at max or whatever there's an appreciation that yes, that's a, a a mighty talented tiny team doing everything they can. But honestly, kudos to you guys that you made a game that people confuse to be a triple A game. You know, right. that's it's amazing. Humbling. It's really that's, humbling. <laughs> that's incredible. <laughs> Congratulations, uh, you know, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I'll jump back into the challenges that you uh, to ask your question. So the challenges, as I said, I can. Approach it from a non-technical and a technical perspective. We had lots of challenges from a non-technical was, as I mentioned, to start up the studio, get people here, recruitment, the pipeline, all of that, as I mentioned. Um, And while the clock was ticking, uh, we did meet every single milestone. As a project manager myself, I was like, there must be something wrong in the video games uh, uh, you know, industry that people are missing deadlines. This is impossible. They either don't know how to project manage or there's something wrong. Obviously, I was wrong because when I came to this <laughs> experienced project manager, I'm like, it's uncertainty kills me as a project manager, you know, because yeah. of the programming things and something broke. Why did it break? Nobody knows how long to fix it. Nobody knows. Could be half an hour, could be three weeks. How can I put a timeline for this? So yeah, that was a from a technical point of view, look, I'm not a technical person, but because of you know, me project managing it, I did pick up on a few. I'll try my best to to mention a few to give a perspective. So mm. one of the things is we have a lot of we have depth in this in this uh, project. So we have depth and projectiles reaching different depth or, or corners at the appropriate speed. Uh, in the world of the game, they are kind of co- covering many kilometers, let's say. But we also have to to make it manageable for the player. So um, so what what happens is like you have to you know sometimes you have to get the projectiles hitting the kilometers down but at the same time hitting a few meters in front of you when the air units are coming so that was a one of the the challenges another one was lighting you know the way we we have tackled light is different from the standard workflow uh, maybe because of the background we come we, we came from so those instances in video games where suddenly the shadow disappears or flickers on the uh, on the face of the character we have completely bypassed that so there will mm-hmm. never be a moment where our you know, Ava or the whatever doesn't have a shadow even on low end machines. So we had to create our own systems outside the engine and bring that in. So that was another challenge. Large scale bosses and kind of animations were challenging. The tentacles were challenging to 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 do as well. Um, and and you know, capturing the mayhem that was found in the in the nice looking good old two D shmups in the past and translating that into a three D. That has been a great challenge. I mean, to capture that and expand on it, m- make it larger in scale. Um, it's not easy to capture in 3D, but we believe we're in a good spot with that. So, so the, the you know um, one of the processes was to introduce hundreds of units on the ground, and as I mentioned, having the the large kind of uh, crowd system was something new that we we brought in, and it was challenging as well because those crowd systems um, they don't act as a background prop. In their real-time crowd systems, unique in the genre, perhaps, and, and also uh, they avoid the boss legs. So when you have the boss legs coming in and the crowd is, is kind of coming uh, closer to them, they will avoid that. So these sort of things uh, were, awesome. were interesting. And maps are larger in Signy, not needed yeah. to say. So you are, you know, the first level is probably longer than, uh, you know, than the usual ones, and the the, lar- the last level is also long, but the ones in between are ten minutes each. Um, 
And generally, I would, one last thing perhaps is the, the fact that, uh, well, the 3D art itself is difficult. To have a top-down camera, you know, camera pointing top down and make something look beautiful with that in art is very well known is quite it's the most difficult thing to do so mm. it was to, the, to to my brother and the team who, who worked on this that they managed to to achieve that and we are using the 16 9 aspect ratio which is again something that is frowned upon by the traditional uh you know community but it just doesn't work on uh you know uh, otherwise so what we did was we had to that's why everything is fast in signy because we had to control the speed otherwise if you rep if you copy and paste the speed of a traditional shoot em up in the 16 and 9 aspect ratio on screen you, you either have to slow everything down to the bare bones or it just wouldn't work it takes yeah. ages to from one side to the other and right. uh so to do that was it was a challenge as well to to introduce that speed. But we we did something else. We have a camera tilting as well that we introduced, and the camera zooms in and out, changes the field of views as well on the go. So yeah, I can go on with this for <laughs> uh, for a long time. But but these are some of the some of the cha technical challenges that 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 we faced, um, but we overcame them as well. And never not to mention the 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 cut scenes and the cinematics were all done in house. Um, and they were done by not again Helen by two people uh, uh, again on the side. So that's you know that's kind of to give you a flavor of of some of the technical and non technical challenges that we face. Yeah, and you see why I had to do this. I mean that yeah, you, the game speaks for itself. It's really cool, but this is cooler. The fact that you guys made it. It's your first game. I want to talk a little bit about Edinburgh, but Richard, I want to talk a little bit about the relationship that you were building with Keelworks and the milestones that they were sending to you guys. And what was that feedback chain like? What was it like seeing something, playing it, giving them ideas, were, incorporated, were they incorporating that or were you sort of hands off and just letting them kind of figure it out and let them kind of find their way? Um, it was it was past you know sort of half and half I think mm. you know as mm. I said earlier we always uh, one of the things we first you know talked about when we when we spoke with Keelworks was that you know we wanted this to always be their their vision um, so you know a bit of a peek behind the curtain obviously we set up when we signed the contract we set up milestones we knew what the deliverables were supposed to be. Um, and yeah, you know, majority of the time, you know, the deliverables came through as, as is, you know, I think the other interesting thing was that we did, you know, as Killworks worked out their, their own workflow. I mean, I think that was another thing having this, having been their first, you know, their first video game, they yeah. had to work out their own workflows. Mm -hmm. um, and so in doing that, you know, we did sort of go back and we, you know, we moved milestones around and deliverables around in order to make for a more streamlined, um, you know, production. But that was, you know, that was always led by Keelworks, you know, you know, with us sort of supporting them as best we could. Um, but no, I, I don't think we had any, we didn't have any missed milestones as far as I remember. Um, That's I'm amazing. Sure I would remember because yeah. you know, they're a headache, right? Yeah. So no, it was, uh, you know, it, it was good. And we, we tried to be as flexible and supportive as possible because we knew that, we knew that, um, you know, those challenges Mahara has spoken about, about setting up a startup, but also them getting their, getting their feet under the table and working out their workflows, you know. So, you know, that's, uh, I think there was a lot of, you know, a lot of learnings going on in the studio at the time. You know, we could, we could help them as much as we could, but, at the end of the day, you know, they're incredibly talented people and they need to find, you know, they need to work out their own workflows. And they did very quickly. Um, well, but yeah, well, we had well, to shuffle a few things around. What did you learn? Because this is something kind of new to you as well, because you've been working with established studios and, and partners that have been developing games for a while. What did you learn? And then you know, help us apply that to the startup developers out there right now or the, <laughs> you know, the, the the wannabe game makers out there that are looking at this landscape and thinking, what is my path? What's how do I how do I work with you, Richard? How does it you know, how does somebody that wants to make games have an opportunity like Keelworks? And, and what was that that lesson or what did what did you learn through this I'm, process that you could carry on? 
I think I think the biggest lesson is a lesson that it's it's always the same. You build in a buffer. You know, you always build in a twenty percent buffer. Mm. You're going to need a fifty percent buffer. <laughs> And I'm pretty sure my hair would agree with that. Um, you know, <laughs> that's uh, that's that's video games. As as he touched on earlier, you know, you you fix one thing in the game and you break something else. You know, and and then right. trying to track down what's caused that. Um, you know, and uh, <laughs> I I so felt for for my hair and his project management. Um, he's so methodical and so meticulous, and then to be thrown into this maelstrom of video game development and i think it's been uh, i think it's been a bit of a, a steep learning curve and a realization <laughs> that you know you you need to you need to mitigate as best as you can and build in as much uh, you know as much uh, leeway as possible it's um, magic and band-aids isn't it? <laughs> it exactly yeah it's meatball <laughs> surgery isn't it <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, we, we don't I, we don't always appreciate that on the other side i think it's yeah. like we're playing something you know and but it is it's it, it's every one of these games is a bloody miracle even with engines and even with experience it's crazy yeah, yeah. and I, but i think you know going back to your the, one of the other questions which you sort of you, you touched on which was you know how how does someone get to work with us um I think that's incredibly difficult to answer. Um, mm. I think we met Keelworks. We believed in what they were doing. We could see the potential in them and their abilities. Um, sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have to have faith in people and, and yeah. faith in your own sort of, in your own, I guess, in your own belief. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think this speak. I think it speaks more to, you know, the skill and the you know the craftsmanship of of hill works themselves faith faith is a very interesting element in here because there does come a point and i've certainly discovered this in my career too you know it works on the making television side of it you just have to kind of believe in the people right you just have to go yeah. out because at the end of the day you're you're signing a deal based on hope you hope that yeah. this comes together, right? I mean, and yeah. and, it, and you never know if it's gonna. No, it, exactly. You know, and mm. like I say, you know, we could be there to support and advise as much as possible. But, you know, the skill and the ability of the people and our belief in them, I certainly believe that I couldn't go and, you know, do what they're doing any better than they're doing. Right. You on. know, it really was, it, it was really about understanding, you know, that uh, yeah, understanding and believing in their in their abilities, um, and yeah, you get to those certain points, and you know, in every in every development, you get to those points where you're, you're you've got your head in your hands and you're going, oh goodness me, this is uh, <laughs> are we ever going to see the light at the end of the tunnel? But then you know you do. Everyone digs deep. You know you have to keep going back to why did we sign this game originally? You know we, we because we believe in what we're doing. That's awesome. Richard, how many games have you made or been a part um, of? Not that, how many have I been part of? I've been at Konami uh, for 20 something years, 23 years. Amazing. So, but in various different, in various different units. Um, I started out in the sales department. I've done brand management, marketing, um, project management, all sorts of different things. Um, so in this current role, you know, with, uh, with the sort of, proper hands-on production uh this is my second amazing but what people might not understand on the outside is that all of the other ingredients all of the other roles they're all huge parts of all of this it's right 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah, yeah, yeah. never underestimate how interconnected everything is um, I was just out for dinner with a friend yesterday and uh and, and he relayed that the the person that green lights, these massive, massive budget games that they're working on um, is from marketing, and now they're basically the production head of of a huge company, and and they they say whether this thing goes or not, you know, and it's it's illuminating. I think people sometimes push push all that aside, but it, you have to sell these things. <laughs> you know, they they have to yeah. reach people yeah. so that you can do it again, right? That's incredibly yeah, yeah. important. I yeah, I guess if I'm being a bit self, you know, sort of uh, introspective, yeah, I've, I couldn't possibly count how much I've learned in those different roles. Yeah. You know? And it's all part of that 
larger understanding of you know, the games industry, what makes a great game, you know, and and getting a game from start to finish, and then yeah. selling it. So yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think all that experience has been incredibly valuable. I think one of the things that's going to come out of Signy is there's going to be a newfound appreciation for the shmup history of Konami. So I'm I'm eagerly anticipating some new collections from you guys. I think that's going to happen. And uh, I think that people are going to, like me, stop and say, why the hell did we stop making these awesome games? These yeah. are really fun to play. You know, I think there's going to be a lot of attention on that. Um, uh, I, I, this has been an amazing conversation and I do want to let you guys go. I know you got to get to work here, but uh, I, I do have to ask about Edinburgh. It is one of my favorite cities on the planet. And my wife and I have talked about moving there many times. Uh, we've been there a bunch. Um, it's also uh, home to quite a few development studios and most famously Grand Theft Auto 6 is currently being made in your beautiful city. Meher, why Edinburgh? Why why did you set up there? What was the attraction and how much of the established game community um, was helpful to you in this new opportunity and and, and uh, building Keelworks and making Signy? Very good question. I love Scotland. I was here for a long time uh, when I moved from from Lebanon, and and basically uh, living in Scotland for me was just so inspiring. First of all, the people are nice. To, uh, okay, we don't have the sun. Let's put that aside for now. <laughs> right? put, if you're from Lebanon, aside. you must miss the sun. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we put that aside. Other than that, it's it's historic. Uh, hist it's full of cultures, full of history. It's full of Wherever you turn, if you walk on the street, you look at this, you know, at those at those historic buildings, and you get inspired already. So mm. it's the it's, it's the place where I feel that art is meant to be created somehow. Mm. So I mm. loved Edinburgh. I loved school. I was living in Aberdeen before, and I moved to Edinburgh because I always wanted to move to Edinburgh with my wife and, and my kid. So mm. and then when we st I, I established a studio, well, because I was living in Edinburgh, that's where I wanted to establish it, and then that's where the that's where Nareg moved as well, and then and then this, this is how this studio grew but that was the primary reason why i wanted to stay here now we have another place called dundee which is very very popular and it's like it's kind of referred to as a silicon valley of of the of europe or maybe uk whatever so because there's a university that was one of the first that established to get you know with the degrees for game development so what happened and this kind of goes nicely with your previous comment that you and rich were talking about uh, that as soon as the graduates came out of this university, they they were like, what should we do? And we, we love making games. So let's establish a company to make games. So they, that's how a lot of companies now exist in Dundee. But what most of these guys uh, who are now my friends, you know, or the ones that closed down before that uh, forget is that they are running a business as well. And I think yeah. this is very important to mention for indie studios. Uh, it's important to focus on the production. It's important to be passionate about, the, about something to, to make something nice. But then when you're when you're running a business, it's a business, it's not a hobby. And when you're talking to publishers, and this is where my experience comes in, it was a struggle. It was not easy. For on various fronts, you need to uh, have a good product that stands out. You cannot do the same as everybody else, and then you're going to struggle to find the deal, especially if it's your first deal. But also, what I realized is that publishers they could mitigate that risk that you were talking about earlier. It's not only about the hope. You can, of course, you're going to hope for the best. That's <laughs> everybody needs to do that. But at the mm. same time, if you're a publisher who asks the right questions, you will be able to identify if somebody is really bullshitting or not. So you will be able to identify that. And I think that's what Konami managed to do. And very few other publishers I spoke to, you would be surprised to hear. Not right. a lot of them. You know, if a concept is nice, even on a piece of napkin, they should jump and grab it by the neck. And I well, didn't... Ma Meher, I, I think that's because even if you've got your business ducks in a row, it it is still a crapshoot, you know, and that's that's a big part of the history of games. But I think you're absolutely correct. You, you know, like I run a production company as well, making content, and it is two different companies in a way. You have a creative company and you have a, a business company and you have to kind of understand all of that. And I, I give that advice all the time. I'm happy that, that you're saying that. I think that's awesome. It needs to go hands in hand. I think the creative, yeah. so my brother runs the creative side, I run the business. And if during the peak production, if you gave me, Three people, I would have given them full time jobs. I mean, you know, so so it's it's really really busy, and I cannot even imagine if you're doing it right. I cannot even imagine somebody who's working on the game as a programmer or an artist 
can also manage and do the liaison with the publisher you know we yeah, were yeah. I, was, I was talking to richard and and the team in konami almost every single day they were visiting the office every single month you know and i wanted that because there was a lot to cover a lot to keep them posted because if they're po- keep kept posted with all the difficulties and the challenges then they will bother me less and i will bother them less as well i will, yeah, they yeah. will be less concerned about what's happening you know because they'll be informed to the, to every single uh, problems we're facing and that has been absolutely helpful for us i'm not just saying this because uh, richard is here he knows i'm a direct talker <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate what they have done because they have given us full creative freedom they have been super supportive um, you know and and it's been a, such a good experience like i don't even remember one issue we had during those all this time from negotiating until the end so it's been you know it's been challenging but also smooth and and uh, and exciting Right. Well, just to just to give you a little context too, when they showed off the game last year, and this was after they showed off the Metal Gear collection, and there was uh, a Bomberman title and everything, they showed off Signy, and it was stunning. And all of the other press that I was uh, bubbling around with, everybody was really impressed, and we were playing it and going, "This is cool." But Keelworks was mentioned over and over again, and it was also mentioned with this idea of like we should all know who you guys are, and I'm like. <laughs> what who's kill works where are these guys and and then i found out they're they're in scotland and i'm like oh my god i want to go visit those guys i love scotland i love it incredible i'd love Thank to come you. but but just to say the uh that konami's been very upfront and but you know not everybody i spoke with i'm like i, I who's kill works and the guy that i talked to konami's like I think they're in Europe. I think they're in, they're in Scotland. <laughs> so not everybody knew, but your name was out there. And just, I there was a, there's a really good vibe about that. You know, like they really were putting that this is a partnership, and and they're as excited as you guys are. And Thank you. and I hope I hope you're both feeling really good because uh, you know I really like the game. I've reviewed a million things in my life, and I really like the game. And I hope other previews and other other journalists you've been speaking with have been you know as entertained and impressed. And and I hope you guys so are doing far, well. Yes, I mean thank you very much first of all, Vic, for this opportunity and for your kind words and feedback. And I, I feel is genuine as well. And it's this is what it is. If you understand what we are trying to do with Signy, you would appreciate it. If you understand the story behind who's making get this you know all that stuff you will even think you know look at it in a different perspective i i, yeah. I really encourage people to have a go at this if they like it if they don't like it but just have a go at it if this game i'm hoping this game does well hopefully it will open doors for other shoot em ups other uh, kind of shmups to exist in the future and for publishers to be encouraged to fund more shmups so the success of this game is important and from my perspective not from for selfish reasons but for looking at it from a wider perspective as well so i hope people enjoy it i hope people like it as well awesome richard how are you feeling yeah we're feeling good we're feeling really good um just very excited to to see people get their hands on it now you know we uh, we got a lot of really good feedback from the demo which we put out on next fest um some good critical comments as well, which always yep. helps. Yeah. Yep. Um, yep. So yeah, re- <laughs> so really excited, to, really excited to, for people to finally get their hands on it. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a journey, um, but it's been really fun, challenging, but um, yeah, very fulfilling. So awesome. Yeah, let's hope uh, let's hope people enjoy it. Well, my last question, and and uh, you know, uh, you you guys can answer this how you how you think you're going to get through. It's not that big of a question. I'm just a huge handheld PC fan. I love the Steam Deck. I I like the ASUS ROG Ally, and the Ally X is coming soon. I'd like to run this game at 60 frames a second on the handheld PCs. Are we going to get to that on the handheld PCs? Because right now it's around 40, 47, I think it's kind of um, We optimized it. We did some more work after the Steam Next Fest uh, because one of the feedback that we, the people really wanted to play this on a Steam, Steam Deck. Yeah. And we have to go back and optimize it. You know, optimizing it was not easy, generally speaking, because of whatever is happening with all the 3D and stuff and, and the yeah. bullets and a number of things. So optimization generally now it's in a good place for pc but from steam deck we've done more work and optimize it for steam deck unfortunately it's not going to run on 60 fps it's locked on 30 so uh that's that's inevitable uh but uh, it will be played it's good enough for the steam deck actually uh, we really enjoyed playing it on the steam deck it uh, looks amazing 
Yeah, and hopefully in the future we'll 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 make it work on on Switch, but that's a different story. It requires a completely different workaround, and we yeah. are some R and D for that. People will appreciate, but they, you know it requires time and and time is money and all the rest of it. It's not easy. And people, to, yeah, yeah. So we are working on it. We hope that we can get it on Switch, but you know it's just in in a, in a testing phase at the moment. Well, guys, congratulations. Uh, I think it's a ter terrific story. I'm so glad you guys had the time to come and join me to do this. I think it's awesome. This is m way better than me just putting a preview video out there. Signy is coming out August 6th on PlayStation 5. Is it on PS4 as well or just PS5? No, PS5. PS5, Xbox Series, S and X, and PC. And yes, it's playable on Steam Deck and ROG Ally. I've been playing it on both. Thank you guys, congratulations, and thank you so much for joining us here. Thank you all for watching and for listening. If you are listening to this, make sure you also follow us on YouTube. You can watch these interviews with video. Uh, that's youtube.com slash EPN TV. Thank you for your subscription and your support. We will see you soon. And until then, play forever.